got to have, I've got to tell you one more. I've got to tell you one more. Sorry, sorry. What is going on, everyone? How you doing? Welcome back to the channel, Ed Talks About. I'm Ed. What's good? So, yeah, today I'm going to be talking about hemp. And actually, it's cannabis sativa L. If you want to get all technical with it, it's hemp's just a made up word. The scientific name is cannabis sativa L. All right? So, in the 1800s, hemp was an important crop to the UK. I mean, everything textiles, ropes, sails, you know, like it was, it made everything because it was it's such a durable product and it grows quick yeah so if you need more you don't got a long time to wait and then it just regrows another crop so it was used everywhere you know it used to grow just along riverbanks used to grow in farms like they used to have a certain amount of a um a farmer I used to give a certain amount of his land to specifically grow hemp for all the boats and everything you know back in the day when it was just boats everywhere like we're just you know what I'm talking about, yeah? But in the late 1800s, hemp starting to decline because you had all these synthetic things coming in, like nylon and that. And uh, yeah, people use cotton and things like that, but environmentally, cotton needs a lot of water, needs a lot of pesticides to grow, so anyway. So not only did these synthetics started to come in, these nylons and stuff, in 1928, there was an act passed by Parliament called the Dangerous Drugs Act. And that led to increased regulations on cannabis, sativa L, cannabis, all of the all of the above, everything. It, it, so that limited its cultivation due to its relationship with cannabis. So cannabis, sativa L started to slow down. There was like a stigma around it, starting to create this stigma. You know, so in 1928, hemp was basically eradicated but like I say it used to grow naturally everywhere naturally all over the place so all the farms and all the cattle and they used to just graze all the sheep all the lambs you know all the, all the beef everything that used to just graze on hemp now they don't that brings me to a lovely little point is are we as human beings deficient in cannabinoids is our endocannabinoid system deficient because all of the meat and everything that used to be eaten back then was the animals used to eat hemp and they used to be filled with cannabinoids the milk they drank the meat you know it just and then the humans stopped getting that and I believe and it's my theory it ain't scientific but I mean I'm just thinking to myself hang on a minute we're all deficient. There's a lot of illnesses and autoimmune diseases. My wife has got all, loads of autoimmune diseases. But if she wasn't deficient in cannabinoids from birth, and her mother wasn't, and her grandmother wasn't, would she have these illnesses now? It's a big question mark. But I mean, I'm leading to the side of, yeah, she wouldn't have these illnesses now. But that's, that's my view. And let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think the human race is actually deficient in cannabinoids because of the way hemp has been or cannabis sativa l has been portrayed that it's a dangerous drug and i mean textile you can build houses with it now people are building planes you can build cars you can run your car off of it you know oh it's just it's insane let me just give you five reasons that why hemp is better than the synthetics that come along yeah so number one sustainability now hemp can grow quick we know that it's very, very, the cycles are very, very quick. They don't need any pesticides. It needs less water and your cottons and all that, like I said before. And environmentally, they will damage, the cottons damage the planet more than hemp would. And the second thing is biodegradability. We've all heard about it. Do you know what I mean? Hemp is a biodegradable product. And what do I mean by that? It doesn't take long for it to break down and turn to a mulch and seep back into the earth. Yeah, but where you've got synthetics and other things like that and plastics, they will take decades, if not hundreds of cent like centuries to decay. Some things, thousands of years to decay. Hemp wouldn't do that, but you can make all these things out of hemp. Do you see what I'm saying? Like this concrete block here that I've got in my garden, this is fence panels. It could all be made from hemp, everything. Number three, a carbon footprint. I've already touched on that. Hemp 
absorbs so much CO2 from the atmosphere and also, <coughs> excuse me, it, it cleans radiation from the floor. So say in Chernobyl, grow hemp, yeah? They grow hemp, it will just radiate, take up all of that shit out of the ground, take crap out of the sky. So what's number four? Let me tell you number four, yeah? So like I said before, you know, it's it can make rope, textiles, loads and loads of things. Loads of things, right? And not only is it better on the environment, cleans up the planet, yeah? And byproducts, uh, animals can eat, you know, like the byproducts of it. Not only does it do all that, it lasts longer than the conventional rope. It can last, it can outlast most things. Its durability is insane. I mean, I, I, let me tell you one more, just number five, and then I'm gonna let it go, all right? Health and safety, little things. So, when you've got a bottle that's made of these plastics, and you've got a drink in it, if you had a hemp one that's made of this, made of hemp plastic, the normal plastic bottle can actually harm a human's health. It has microplastics and everything like that in it, but the hemp one wouldn't. It's just a standard fact that stuff made by hemp is a lot healthier on a human being than anything else, even the clothes I'm wearing. If they was all made by hemp, I don't know. Some people can't wear certain clothing, but if it was all made of hemp, I reckon we'd have a lot less irritations and things like that, you know what I mean? Just one more thing, just one more thing. Just, sorry, sorry, one more thing, one more thing. Hemp, yeah, can absorb 15 to 20 tons of CO2 per acre. And trees in the same acre can take 48 to 100 tonnes of CO2 out of the sky. And you're thinking, well, the trees piss all over the hemp, don't they? Well, no, it, that's a full grown tree, yeah? Not a little sapling or anything like that. We're talking a full grown tree that's had to have been there for 50, 60 years. Now, a harvest of a cannabis crop takes about four months with the perfect, with, with normal conditions and in perfect conditions it can be finished quicker because hemp isn't something that you're trying to like it ain't like the medicine that we're looking for in medical cannabis it doesn't have to the tri trichomes don't have to be white to a certain extent it just needs to be a hemp tree that they can pro process and get out the door to make their rope or to do whatever do you see what i'm saying yeah they can crop a couple a year now in them 50 or 60 years they will take they would absorb about five times more CO2 than the trees ever would. Because they would keep taking, they keep absorbing, they keep, and also, like I said before, they clean the ground. Like tobacco farmers, yeah? Tobacco farmers, they grow hemp on their farms when they're trying to clean, because they grow, they, they, they put radiate, all that shit all over the tobacco in it, yeah? To keep all the pesticides, it's like, it's crazy. But they, tobacco farmers out in rural places, they have to, they have a certain bit of land, yeah? So one bit of land, one year, they will grow hemp on it. And what that does is that will clean all the ground up, yeah? Then they harvest that hemp, and then they will grow their tobacco on there next day, but they will rotate the field, do you know? Because the hemp cleans the floor, cleans up all, takes all the shit out of the ground, everything, and just grows. So that's another thing. And I know I said only one more, and I went another one, but you know, sometimes these things are in your head and you just need to get them out, don't you? Ah, oh, do you know what? I've got, I've got to tell you one more. I've got to tell you one more. Sorry, sorry. Hemp per acre, right, can produce four to ten times more paper, like pulp, to make paper than trees. Where is the logic in growing a tree to make paper for the schools and that when you could be growing hemp and getting four to ten times much more? Surely, if you're a paper company, you're going to be four to ten times more profitable by using hemp. Bruv. Bruv. Now I'm done. I just needed to get that last one off my chest, bruv. <laughs> just needed to. So yeah, listen, I hope you enjoyed today's little rant, right? And I'm gonna try and put some more educational content up because I do like, I've got so much stuff in my head, but I have to write it down, do a bit of research, make sure it's all legit and everything, and then pop it out. And sometimes I throw a theory out there that's no scientific backing at all. It's purely like, are we all deficient? But I do believe human beings are deficient, but that's my view. What do you think? Anyway, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. 
if you like me and the channel subscribe to the channel <coughs> and if no one said it to you today people i'm gonna say it all right i love you and i hope you have a blessed day and enjoy this weather man yeah peace out people on the next one